Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new and you have not subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I am a DIY paint retailer and IOD stockist, a recycled treasures decoupage paper retailer, and I love to do thrifted hauls, upcycle, um, home decor, and smalls, and furniture, and I have lots of paint tutorials. So what I wanted to do is go ahead and go live and I was having trouble actually on another platform and I started creating these um, beautiful vases and so what I've done so far these are just standard cheap vases that maybe you get from the florist or from Dollar Tree or whatever I got these for 99 cents at Goodwill so this is what I've done I've mixed DIY paint um, in vintage linen, which is one of our five whites, and crinoline, another white. It's actually a, a creamy yellow white. Vintage linen is a uh, soft aged white. It's not bright, bright white. And I wanted to create just a uh, off-white kind of look. So the first one, I mixed both of these products with salt wash. And salt wash is an additive. I just did it right here on my palette that I always use to put my paint on. And I applied it with a chip brush. This one, I just did one coat. And I'm going to go ahead and put this down. I did one coat of this. And I just stippled it on like this. Now you can see that there are spots where I don't have full coverage. But I have pretty good coverage. And it's very, very textured. Now, I did it with the stipple effect. This one, I'm doing them both colors the same just to show how you can get different looks using the same exact products. I applied this one going this way to have like some striations going through and um, very little texture, just a little bit every now and then. And this has dried. So I literally just did this just a few minutes ago. So now what I want to do is go ahead and apply a second coat. So for my second coat, I'm going to swap colors. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start applying this in random pattern. And the goal of this is to create something that's totally unique, something that's totally different and teach you how to do something that maybe you haven't tried before and you know I always go on here and I do my edited videos and I create challenges and I say do something that you've never done before um, and I, I hope that some of the videos have inspired you to try some different techniques different products but what we're gonna do today is we have the brand new Iron Orchid design products it's released three uh, release 4 is coming soon, so if you are wanting to get more product, go ahead and pick these up. You can pick them up on my website, and once I'm done with this live, I'll go back in the description, and I will give links and add details right now. I just, um, just hit live, so I don't have all of that on there, but what you can do is you can purchase them and I ship UPS in the United States and usually it's two day so you can have it before the weekend and try these so I've already created one YouTube video the last video I showed three different pieces of art that I created using the stamps and the transfer today we're going to be creating art using two of the molds so I'm going to put this here to the side, and I'm going to put it upside down, and I'm going to let that dry, and then we're going to see where we're at. So I thought I didn't have enough, but I think I have more than enough of, of this product. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same exact technique that I did the first round on each one. And again, we're using the same exact colors. I'm using DIY paint and crinoline and vintage linen. And guys, I'm using um, a switcher. So if you're watching me live, I can't see any comments. So um, 
I was hoping my daughter was going to help me, but she wasn't able to. So I'm just going ahead, and you'll be able to pick up some of the white, and then you can even distress this to reveal back some of the white if you want to, and you can just layer if you want to even create a third layer. You can add more if you need it. But I like to show how you can take the same products. We, I talk about this all the time on my videos. You can take the same exact products, give it to everybody. Everyone's going to come up with something different because we all have a different eye for things and we're all created to create. We're all we're made in God's image to create. And so a lot of people think they can. I'm going to hit this with the dryer, so I'm sorry. This one is not as loud as my other one, though. But we can create and have fun. There's something really special about creating. It builds your confidence. It reduces stress. If, if you just go with the flow. <laughs> if you just let it happen. Now, DIY paint is a clay-based paint, and it dries super fast on its own. And it really dries fast with the salt wash also because it's absorbing a lot of the water. Now DIY paint, I said it's a clay based paint, but it also has chalk in it. And so anything that you can do with the chalk style paints, you can do with DIY paint only because of the clay. DIY paint is highly, highly pigmented. It's five times more pigmented then other paints, because of the clay, it, it, it needs more pigment. And so because of that, you can water it down 10 to 1 and still retain its pigment. So that means you can, you can do watercolor, you can do washes, and then you can get it to really, really thick. And you can create texture all on its own and without adding any additive. I mean, obviously, when you add the additive, it's going to be totally a different texture. I've, I've done um, cornstarch before to create a thick paste for a raised stencil. And sometimes I've added, a lot of times I've added um, Durham's putty powder for raised stencils as well. I like, if I'm doing a multimedia pick, uh, piece, I do both. I like the cornstarch because the paint is super, super smooth. I'm just going to hit this a little bit high, hotter. Just be careful with the heat gun and be careful with the glass. All right, I think this is dry. I'm gonna move that and I'm gonna get this going. And you can see the texture on this. Now, you didn't, if you stipple it and it's too much texture for you, you can take your brush and kind of brush them down. You can also sand it a little bit. I really like sanding on furniture. Because when you create the layers with the salt wash and you sand it, you will take off the harsh texture, but it still looks like it's hard, but it becomes soft. It is such a cool, cool thing. As a matter of fact, um, I didn't bring this. Look, I've got so much left. I'm going to have to find something else to paint because that's usually what I do. I try not to waste any paint. I'll try to use what I've got and make something with it. Let me see if I can get a sanding sponge real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. Sorry about that. I didn't plan to do that and so I usually try to have everything here but all right so I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a sanding sponge. And I may have to add some more paint because it's still kind of damp. And this is on glass. Of course, the longer it stays on, the more durable the it paint adheres and, and it won't come off. But of course, I just did this, so. And see, it's, it's getting smoother, but there's still a lot of texture. And this, I mean, it's still damp. Normally, I would never do this this fast. A 
I definitely want to do it on the edge. Let me raise this up a little bit. There we go. But it's not right on top. All right, I'm going to let this dry here for a second because it is damp. And then I'm going to look at it and see where I need to fill it in. Now this one, I'm not going to sand it. But do you see how this, this looks like true pottery? I love this look. I love the stippled look too. Let me see. Let me go ahead and just hit this maybe with the, um, with the white. And I'm just going to do soft peaks. So I'm just going to, so I'm not going to pounce it like that hard. I'm going to, I grabbed both colors. A lot of times when I do the stipple effect, I like to blend as I go. And if I'm doing furniture, after I've got my first couple initial coats like this, then I go with a really, really watered down, like um, where I just paint it on or, or spritz it with my water mister and get it to come off and get it to drip and then I use my my rag. I actually had, you know, to, to kind of blot it up. I had a video and it was coming out so awesome because I was excited to, to put it on YouTube. A, a beautiful cabinet. I have to show a picture of it next time that I'm on here. And half of the videos got deleted somehow. I was so disappointed and so I couldn't do the video. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to be using this mold. This is called the Roses. It takes the place of the Heirloom Roses, the previous rose mold, but what's really awesome is that you can actually combine the two together. Now these molds are huge. They're so much bigger. The other ones were deeper, uh, very, very detailed, but this is detailed in a totally different way. Very artistic. I love these molds, and so this is what we're going to use today. And so I'm going to take since this is the first time that I'm using it, I have what I call my craft cornstarch and I keep it in this large mason jar and I keep it with my clay and with my um, mold. I have a, bas a basket that I put them in. So I think I'm going to be using these leaves. I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of it, but I'm going to go ahead and dust this with my cornstarch and this just helps. I'm going to go ahead and hit all of them. I'm not sure what I'm going to use. But this just helps for your mold to release. If you're new to Iron Orchid Design, the clay that they make is an artisan quality air dry clay. It is so soft and so awesome. And air dry clay, you know, you might get some cracking and you're definitely going to get some shrinkage. But you don't get as much as with other clays. And I really love it. It's so easy to work with and you really get some really nice mold. I always like to pat, I shouldn't have probably done that, it makes everything shake, pat off the excess and I had some here that I used the other day where I made a book. Oh, I should have grabbed it. That's my next video um, that I'll be editing. I'm, work, I'm gonna be working on it this week. And then I have also my, one of my last one of my videos last month I took my daughter to Paducah and we went on a thrift haul I have it on here if you haven't seen it you can check it out um, well last couple weeks ago was my birthday we did the same thing but we went to Lexington I got to meet one of my DIY sisters and I'm gonna put all that on there so that's the video I'm gonna be working on for this week's release so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use my thumbs and spread spread this out in here. Now the cavities are they're pretty large um, and you get some really great detail like I said. There's the patent, patented, patented um, micro rim that helps you to have a really crisp edge and you just take your thumb or your finger you can take any straight edge uh, like this and just run it to get off the excess. 
but you want this to be straight. And so what I like to do is once I think I've got it pretty straight, I want to get this smooth. And I rub my thumb over it and it gets it kind of smooth. And then all you have to do is turn it upside down and pull it back. You're not gonna break the mold. It's meant to, to do that. Oh, you know what I didn't grab was glue. Now look at this. Here, let me put it this way. Ariana! I totally forgot the glue. She's in her room. All right, let me get the glue. I'm so sorry. She moves. She wants to go where I go. I prefer Type Bond Quick and Thick. It dries fast and it's super thick and it works so well, especially if you're doing something on a vertical surface. I might not use the whole vine as is. I may just have a couple. Let's just see. And that's the beauty of of Iron Orchid Design mold, especially with the other molds. Like you can just take pieces of something if you wanted to use just a piece of it. Now it's air dry clay, so normally I have it all wrapped up if I'm not using it because it will dry out. And so I, I try to work fast. And I want it to be even. I want it to be really flat so that it will stick. There we go. So on Tuesdays, I'm normally live on the DIY paint page. I do a live 11 Central and I had to cancel it today. I'm going to cut this. I had to cancel it because my air conditioning went out. And so I started to go on my page to go ahead and get on here on my, on my Facebook page. And I was, there's so much trouble on there. But this week on Thursday or next week, or no, it's this week, I'll be live on Roy Cycled Decoupage Paper. She's been doing a 12 Days of Christmas. I have no idea what I'm doing yet because I joined at the last minute. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to join in on the fun, but um, I am gonna be on. I'll be at 7.30 Central, which is super cool because she, Royce actually gave me her spot. Um, she's so awesome. I love being a part of her retail team. Now, what's really cool about these IOD molds is that it tells you how much resin or how much clay you need for each mold. So if you only have a little bit, it can you can kind of figure out if you have enough or not. And so I'm this is such a small vase. So I'm gonna be putting this on here. I didn't want to overwhelm it and I didn't want it to be too large. Um, I might I might try for this one. Let's see if we can get this one. I'm not sure if I have it. I might need more clay. All right, let's open this one up. Whenever I open up clay, I usually try to get a saran wrap or um, the wrap, or I can't open that, or I try to put it in a Ziploc bag. It's super, super moist when you first get it out and it just starts drying, you know, but it's the best when you can first get it out. So I usually try to fold it and hold it here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine this. I can tell a difference between the two, that's for sure. I'm going to work the clay together and I'm gonna try to get it as big as my, oh, my cavity. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, now I didn't 
put any cornstarch on this. It'll still work. It'll come out. The, the molds work very, very well, but what you want to do is be careful. The reason that the cornstarch works so well is because it allows you to just let that mold come out very, very easily. The more that you mess with it, the more that it can stretch and crack. So that's another reason why. Now see, I have a dip. I don't know if you can see that. See, I have a dip in there. I want that to be totally, totally smooth. And I want to make sure that I work that clay in. So whenever you add more clay in, you don't want it to crack. You don't want it to come apart. You really want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. You can even take like a palette knife like this and go straight. But I usually try, or a credit card, a debit card, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this right back in here. And I'm going to wrap this up. Now again, all of these products can be found on my website, except for the salt wash. I'm not a retailer of the salt wash. But you can find the other product, IOD and DIY, on my website, lisaboondesigns.com. And I've got, paint is coming, praise the Lord. Paint is coming, let me put this back in here, tomorrow, because I've been low. And then I have IOD coming, I don't know when, soon. I, a new transfer, I did not, um, I need more. And then there were some other transfers that I was low on. All right, so now what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to turn it upside down, and I'm going to release it. See, it, it came out very, very easily. Oh, wow. All right. So, so pretty. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to let it, see, because it's soft and it's very pliable, and you can have it go all around. I don't know if I want it. I'm just figuring out how I want this. I might do this. I'm, I see you can layer it and create some really awesome texture. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. I'm going to take my quick and thick. I usually use my fingers. What you want is you want to make sure that you have even coverage of the glue and definitely around the edges. And you don't want too much, but if you do get too much, what I like about this glue is that it dries white. And so I'm just spreading it. Any excess, I just wipe off. But since I've got this mold to go, I'll put it on there. Again, this. Thank you for watching this video. If you've never watched it, or if you're catching me live for the first time, let me know. Um, I would love um, to know who you are. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to be careful because I don't want to press this so hard that I ruin the detail because see there's so much detail on here and I want to make sure that everything is really really connected and whenever you're doing molds you kind of want to do that sporadically as it's drying see you don't want that you can fill it later if it if that happens you could fill it with clay or you, I like sometimes to use um, Alex fast dry paintable caulk I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna go ahead and put this leaf like that. Alright, get that on there. So now let's go ahead and get this one. So you can do this on furniture, you can do this on anything. This is glass, 
and you can do it on wood, on metal. Let me just take the excess. Now this is messy. You see my hands? <laughs> Whenever you have glue in this clay, you're gonna you're gonna be playing with your hands to get all the gook off for a little minute. All right. So I want this to be like this. So I'm going to layer it. So I've got the, this bloom going this way, this bloom going that way. I like to do that. So I'm just going to, my, I need to get a baby wipe. The glue on my fingers makes it want to come up. So I'm just going to wipe my hands real quick. Okay. Yeah, because it wasn't getting on there good. All right, this way. All right, there we go. Now I can get it. I was having a hard time. And so you want to make sure that it's on this rose and you can feel it. You want it in between this leaf, on the leaf, on the outside, and make sure that every part is adhered. And see that on the top, here, let's see. Where did I see it? It wasn't adhered very well. Right here. I don't know if you can see that. But you just want to keep addressing that. And just make sure, see like right here, that it's glued down. Now I'm going to take my, I think I'm going to take my little leaf and have it coming like that. And then my bloom. My little bloom coming over here. I don't think I'm going to do another branch. It's kind of suggestive that there's branches. And if you want to make sure that you have, you can, you can get, see this has a, a stem here. And I could have just taken this hole and created a stem in there. But I think I like it like this. And so I'm just making sure. And I'm going to let this sit here. So best pra practice is you want this to develop a little bit of a crust in an hour or two and you can paint it. Um, I don't always do that. Sometimes I just go ahead and I go for it. But if you do that, use a soft brush and a soft hand because you don't want to lose the detail. So I'm going to put this to the side. Okay, so now this one. See, there's this weird scratch right there. I, and it's it, it would show like an imperfection in the pottery, but I think I'm going to cover that up because I don't think I like that. So I was thinking about using the Cameo. So this is the Cameo mold and super, super detailed. I have not used this at all yet. You can make all kinds. Look at this pendant jewelry. You can do it with resin. You can do it with polymer clay. But y'all, you could create sugar arts with these as well. It, if you're into sugar arts, you don't have to do furniture and home decor. You can do sugar arts, so that's pretty cool. Holidays are coming up, and you could make beautiful cookies, beautiful chocolates, um, decorate a cake with these molds. They're FDA um, food safe, um, if you're into that. If you know, if you care if it's um, approved or not. So I'm gonna do this big mold. Let me see. Do I have? I have a little bit of cornstarch. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it since there's so much detail and there's so many little crevices in here. I want to make sure that I get this 
really, really covered well. Now, if, if you use this for clay, and then you decide that you want to use it for resin, just clean it out with soap and water and let it dry really well. So see, I just got it into an oval shape, pretty much about the same size. And then I'm going to just start removing the edges. See that micro rim really separates that clay for you. It does all the work. So I'm just going to, I think it's pretty good, but let's see if we can shave just a little bit off. Okay, and every last drop, as long as it doesn't have glue on it, I put it right back in here. And this isn't a used piece, so when I put this away when I'm done, I'm not going to leave it in here. I'm actually going to put it in a Ziploc bag. But for right now, I've got this here. And then I'm going to turn it over, flip it out. Now, this one is probably going to crack right there. But I would be okay with that. That doesn't bother me. I know some people get really bothered. They don't want it to crack. But I want this to look like it's an aged piece of pottery. Um, when I'm doing furniture, I want it to look old, layered, chippy, distressed. Um, so that's just my preference. If, if you really don't want that look, then use resin. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just negate it on here. And it's nice and straight. And do the same thing. I'm just going to make sure that there's great contact. It's not pulling up. I don't want to lose my detail, so I'm not going to mess with pushing it too hard. see that way there we go so I'm gonna leave this here for a second all right I'm gonna come back to this because and you want to like get all of that off you can wait till it hardens up and then kind of just shake it off because you don't want the hard clay in your next mold next time you use it and see how let me see you can't see what I see. Let me see. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to see what I see. Let's see, there we go. All right. No, I can't get the right angle. Well, I was trying to show you, but I. It's you just want to hit it now. Because it's warmer here, there we go, here. It's right in there. I just want to get it in there. I want to make sure it's laying down. Um, this is developing a little bit of a crust already. And what's really great about using the salt wash is you can get the crust in there and it actually will help you to make it look like it's all one piece. Now you can just use regular paint. You don't have to do it this way for your top layer, but this really does help it come together and it fills in any unwanted crack. And it helps it to adhere. 
So I'm not going to put this everywhere, but just in a few little spots around. And especially because of this pouncing technique, like you, you want to be careful. You don't want, see I filled in that there was a gap there. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side. I see some, I see some gaps. But I'm not finished with this, so we still have more layers. More and more. And see how like you can lay it and change it up and create different texture. That's what is so cool about the salt wash versus just doing it, you know, with cornstarch. Cornstarch would give it texture, baking soda will give it texture, but I promise you it's not the same. There's lots of YouTube tutorials showing you how to do uh, the baking soda technique to make things look like concrete. And I've tried it, I've done it, but I'm, I tell you for sure, salt wash is definitely the better way to go. And I, you know, and if you, if you need some, I have some friends that sell it. All right, I think what I want to do is create just a light. I want to add a little bit more white. So I'm just going to go very, very lightly, like just hit it just every now and then. It's almost too small for my hand. Let me know in the comments, have you ever tried salt wash? And if you have, what have you done with it? What have you created with it? So I'm just creating another layer. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side. I'll put this to the side. I'm gonna grab my heat gun. Now, normally if I'm doing molds, I don't like to do the heat gun. I like it for it to dry naturally. Uh, because if it, the slower it dries, the less likely that it will crack and have any problems. But again, if it does crack, it's fixable or you can leave it. It depends what you're looking for. But if you rush it, you, you can guarantee you'll probably get a couple of cracks. Hold on a second. I have a little bit too much texture right here, so I'm just gonna wipe it down with my finger. Cause I don't want I don't want it to look like concrete on my or whatever it is that we're doing the on there. I want it to be smooth. So, what I decided, um, we're going to do two different techniques now. So, we, you, we just use the same exact colors, crinoline and vintage linen. Um, and I think I'm going to swap this. I am going to paint my medallion, my cameo, in gold. Golden ticket. I also have some golden rule that I'll probably touch it up on the end on the flip side so hopefully I can get this open well maybe maybe sorry it's always a bear here's my trick for this not to happen but I had this put this is my craft Vaseline and I literally take that and I put it on my rims and I forgot to do it yesterday when I used this. So I just need to bang it a little bit. Hold on. There we go. See, it works. All right. Sorry for the noise. I probably shook the table. But 
what we're going to do now is we're going to paint this. Do I have a little brush? I have one here. So I'm going to use this angled brush. It's just a regular cheap, like a Walmart one. I'm, I always, when I shake it, there's some on the lid. I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this in gold. And I'm trying to do a very, very light touch because I don't want to mess up the detail. If you were doing this at home, you know, leave it, walk away, and then come back to it. But even if I leave a little bit of the white, I'm okay with that. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I say that all the time. Nothing has to be perfect. But be the, what we're doing here, we're going to be distressing it. And we're going to be adding layers. So it really, really doesn't matter. It would it will look like maybe somebody had painted it white over top or that it would be painted several different colors, really. Now, if I'm doing this on furniture, a lot of times I will even um, hit it with the spray, the spritzer, and let it drip. So if you get, like, a little bit of gold on the side, like, it. You know, you can touch that up or you can just, you can take this while, you, if you bothered you and just wipe it with a baby wipe. So I always keep baby wipes on hand and I actually just dressed it a little bit, but all right, we're going to leave that and let it dry. So while I have this, let's go ahead and grab the Vaseline. <laughs> I just grab it with my finger and see this is caked on because I hadn't been doing it. I usually try to use my FIFO bottles, but I haven't done it with the gold, the, or the, it, well, yeah, I haven't really done it. The liquid patina, I do it, but not the others, I haven't. I have FIFO bottles for them, I just haven't done it. Uh-oh. All right, there we go. I got, I've got gold all over. All right, let me wipe my hands real quick. So what I want to do with this one, so I'm going to leave this here so you can stare at it. Keep it in the shot. There we go. Now this, because it has its gold liquid patina, this is not like regular DIY paint your brush will get hard. So I always have like, this is my old, my jar, and I keep it on hand, and as I'm painting, especially if I'm using Big Top, like, or any of the liquid patinas, I throw my brush in there so that I won't ruin it, and then I'll wash it later in the sink. Okay, this one, what I wanted to do Just trying to see if I can, if, if it's ready for that. All right, we're gonna seal this with the wax. DIY clear wax. I love this wax, and what I'm going to do, see I contaminated it. I put some blue in there. Like you don't wanna do that. So I usually am pretty good. This is transfer I just picked up with it. I. <laughs> it was on the stick and my hair all right I'm gonna take some I don't know how much I need I'm gonna start with that I this is a great little brush it fits great in my hand and I love it I have these on my website too I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with the wax now I'm gonna be careful and this is what I don't recommend doing I should have done the big top on it. Now when you go ahead and seal this, it will start turning all kinds of colors. And 
and you might freak out. It's called the freak out factor, and it's perfectly normal. But this starts changing colors because you've just reactivated it because you've wet it. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this with my finger. It actually has a good little crust on it because we put the salt wash on it. So I'm going to get this in here and I'm going to wipe back the excess. So I'm just getting it on there. Guess if you guys have any questions, I should have said that from the beginning, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I will come back on and and answer them because I can't see them. All right, I had a little bit of a chip there. I can fix that. I'm just feeling it. I can feel the difference of the waxed and the unwaxed. <laughs> that reminded me of something. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this wipe and remove the glopped on. There was some glopped on in those crevices. See, those crevices go pretty deep. And you don't want to have your wax glopped on. I just did that kind of hard and I smushed it a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so now that I have my wax, it acts as a barrier. And what I want to do is add the teal, aqua, whatever color you want to call it. It's called shipwrecked. And I want to add the wax. I thought I had a little brush that wasn't used. I may... I, all of the brushes right here that I have are wet, and I don't want a wet brush. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this. With my shipwrecked wax. In some spots. I really need... I'm going to do it. I really am. I'm going to leave you guys again. I need my... I, I usually have my shop towels right there. Alright, about a rag. Sorry about that. It's terrible of me. Alright, now I'm able to wipe it back, but I want to be very, very careful because I don't want to damage my flowers because it's fresh. I'm trying to get it in there so I don't have to rub back too much. And I'm going to allow it to get on here a little bit. If you get too much somewhere, because I use the clear wax, I can erase it. You've probably heard that a lot. I know I've said it a lot. But it allows you the flexibility to not have too much. But all we're doing is I'm just trying to bring out the details of the flower so that you can really see them and let it pop. That's it, I could do the same thing with the dark wax if I wanted, um, but I wanted to do something different because I do the black wax a lot and brown. You could do it, if this was a different color, you could do it with, who's under me? Oh, Sara, I didn't realize you were out. Um, if this was painted in black, I could do this with the white wax, and I love that look. Or gray or charcoal. I'm just trying to get it a little, like, almost like it bled the, you know, like, they were different colors and it bled. 
off. And it just helps you to see the design. That's all it does. And you can go back and you can add some black. And just see, just if I feel like it has too much, I can take the clear wax and wipe it back. Just to show you. And it would be so much easier if this had been hardened because then I could really really rub and show what I'm trying to show. Either way, it still looks really beautiful. I hope you guys like that. Alright, so I'm going to leave that there and I will let this dry all the way and I probably will add a little bit of a darker color as well just to get more depth but I really like the way it's looking right now so I'm gonna put this here I'll put that right there okay the liquid patina is dry very fast it's tacky I'm gonna go ahead hit this with the heat gun I'm gonna be wrapping up I know I'm almost at an hour. Didn't intend to go this long. Always be careful with your heat gun because those things get hot. All right, so I'm gonna move this for a second. I'm going to use Dark and Decrepid. Dark and Decrepid is also a liquid patina, but it is the only thing that I use for stain. Um, oh, I don't want that one. I didn't clean that one very well. <laughs> Alright, let me see. I, it's how I stain my wood. I've showed a lot of videos on here on using Dark and Decrepid for stain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, you know what, no, wait, wait a minute, I almost messed up. I'm going to take Big Top because I've got to seal this whole thing. I'm going to take Big Top and I'm just going to pour it out right here. I want to seal this entire piece before, I have, all of these are wet. And the reason that they're wet is because it will help my paint to glide, but it will also help my sealer. Um, and you don't want to overbrush, you just kind of want to go over it quickly. Um, this is Big Top. Big Top is like our poly acrylic um, sealer. Very durable. I love using Big Top. It's milky white but then it dries clear now all of that extra I want to get that out so I just usually go ahead because I want it to get in there I did that on purpose and then I just get it out and it was dripping but as long as I can work fast um, I'm good because you don't want to overbrush. DIY paint products dry so fast and any, with any polyacrylic they tell you to not overbrush and to work fast. And it's better to do more than one layer, one, more than one coat. But for this, you're not going to tell if it's streaky or if I miss spots or you know if it's not covered very well. I'm going to put that in the water. I'm going to get my heat gun and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit this quickly. And then we're going to do the dark and decrepit. And it's just going to age it and bring it all together. But the big top will act as a barrier just like the wax did. And allow me to rub it back. I'm going to do this so I can sit it down.
And if you look at it from the side, you can see it drying so you know where you're at. Now here's a tip. If I use Golden Ticket, I try not to use the wax over it because it dulls it down a bit. But if you use Big Top, um, you get this you get that satin finish. You get a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not that you can't put wax on top of it. It just depends on the finish that you're after. I'm actually about to go live in my private group on Facebook. It's my monthly subscription. And um, it'll be my first live. Sorry, my dog. Ginger, no. It'll be my first live for the group. I just started it. I've been talking about it um, for a couple weeks. Ari, please help. And I'm going to be teaching people how to create YouTube videos, how to do lives. How to do marketing with the apps, how to edit videos, how to edit photos, all the stuff that we have to do to grow our business and sell our stuff. If, if you need help in that area, this is hot, so I want to be careful. All right. Um, it's not too late to join my group, but you just go on Lisa Boone Designs. Dot com and I have creative expressions um, group so now I'm gonna go ahead and add and I want this everywhere this time I want the wet wipe and I'm gonna create the grungy and the resisting and again, this is so much better if you let this totally dry. I, um, the book that I did this last week came out so good. I used one of the IOD molds. Hey, Ari, on your way back, can you grab me that book so I can show it? Just grabbed a white, um, a new one that was wet, more wet. And see how I can erase? Okay, thank you, baby. See, I used the white, and this is actually a book that I created. I made a spine for it. This is going to be a video coming soon. Um, it's actually a piece of wood. So that came out super good, but I did the exact technique, not with the gold, but with the white. And I can't press it down too hard. Um, normally, I would press it down a lot harder so I can get it off. But I really, really like that. I hope you do. And if you wanted to add some highlights, you could add highlights to that um, and in a paint color. Or, let me go ahead and cover this up. Let me put my Vaseline because I didn't do that the other day. See, you can see it here. Just rub it all on here. And then cover it up and then you can open it. So you can do it with the gold and add some more gold back in. If you want to just highlight it. The girl. The top part right there. Or you could add the paint color. Okay, let's add some. I find that 
if you glop this golden rule on, you can get some good gold. But if um, if you do lightly, like with your finger, I like to do it with my finger a lot. It's sheer. You can you let her out? She's so hard to get along with. She has that high pitched bark, and it just like gets on the nerves. All right, so. There we go. And it's super cool. It's, now Romy's going to bark. All right, and I think I think this is it, guys. So, I hope that you enjoyed this impromptu live. Um, like I said, I don't normally do lives. I have lots of edited videos because I just, I know a lot of people just want to see it, get it done, learn, watch it. Um, I appreciate it if you've watched this. Um, if you sprinkle it, I would love that even more. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channels. And then don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can receive um, a little notification, notification bell of when I go live. So I appreciate you guys so much. I hope that you have an incredibly blessed day. Look forward to my next, like, my birthday weekend video showing you uh, where we went, who we met, and what all we got. And we're going to be flipping all of that soon. I haven't even um, tackled that haul at all yet. And then I've got a beautiful desk that I've been working on with with golden ticket and golden rule and um it kind of making it look like french provincial with a twist because it's rustic so it looks it's looking super super cool and then um i've got the others the smalls all of the things that i've been creating on the on my facebook page with all of the new iron orchid design products i've got uh sunflowers and uh, pumpkin that came out really really pretty this was my inspiration I'll show that to you and I created it um, last Friday and it turned out so pretty and then of course my book that I created that will be all on a video coming soon so look forward to those great things and who knows what else who knows what I get into <laughs> I hope you guys have an incredible